All right. I've had a lot of people asking questions about a lot of the stuff I have around here. Um, I guess I'll just kind of do a quick run through of some of the junk I built or have. Uh, this one here is my big, I don't know, I call it my BAM hammer. <laughs> Anyways, it's, uh, yeah, it's just made out of some junk. Again, I had some scrap I-beam and whatever that is. I think it's like 4x10 or 12, I don't know, 4x10 maybe. Uh, just made a big frame. The, uh, what I'm driving it is uh, just a diff out of a Dodge Dart, I think it was. It's, uh, the idea behind it was, I just cut one side, I shortened the axle. Um, my idea was to lock the drum or, you know, bolt the drum on properly. I was going to run a cable, like just a long PTO cable down to the ground to a foot pedal. So then I can variable speed the hammer. Uh, to which I have never got around to. Because I built it to, to make a fender for something and I never actually did. But never did make the fender that is. Uh, there's really nothing fancy here. I just cut a plate. Drilled the holes. I just bolted a pulley onto the pinion. Yeah, it's that simple. And then, uh, yeah, I just welded some more, scabbed some more junk on, hung my motor. I got a bungee to hold it tight. I figured it would slip in case the guy maybe somehow got his hand stuck in there. The, uh, the, I don't know what you call this. Basically I made a slide so you can variable the throw, like how much how much, uh, how much this swings. So I can move this out, get more swing if I need. Uh, this is just two connecting rods. I just welded them together. They just happened to be the right size that the bolt that I had fit through with my two pill bearings. More scrap and just a solid chunk of steel. Uh, this isn't even square pipe. I just, I don't know, I welded these flat plates because that was all that made sense to me. I do have some, I think it's Darlin or that, you know, that plastic puck for it to slide on. Uh, this just gives me the adjustability just to hold everything tight and straight. So there's nothing fancy about that. The bottom, kind of the same deal. It's my dies and stuff. I don't know. I've later, I've actually lined this up properly with a jig. I didn't think that through the first time I made it. Um, these are just to align my dies. So, and to hold this thing tight because this thing always comes loose while it's smashing along. So yeah, bar button, not punishing hammer, but that's pretty much the gifs of this thing. Uh, it does what I needed to do, which is shrinking. Uh, I haven't, I've tried making dies to stretch, but they just don't seem to work well, or at least I haven't had any luck with it. I did make other dies, but I find I used the planishing hammer before that. I mainly just used this to shrink some steel. I did make a couple dies to try to have to make panels that whatever had a weird body line or do something. That was the plan. I haven't done it yet. Uh, one of the upgrades I have for that is I do have a motor off a sewing machine, so it's variable speed by itself. So I wasn't really going to muck around with that drum brake thing. I was just going to change the motor be lazy about it because I have it so I'm just going to use it yeah that pretty much covered uh, my looper press again I built it for a car that I was working on actually my Barrett all car that bare steel uh, my temperatures under the hood actually the under the hood temps were good it was just so hot in the car from the firewall and stuff I was going to louver the hood and uh, get some of the air out but again never happened when I actually built it, I just decided I wasn't going to re-cut up my car, so uh, this is just built from scrap stuff again, too. Um, I originally just did the C-channel, but then I realized when this thing punches the steel, there's uh, so much flex in it, I had to build the big frame up top. It still flexes, but not as bad. Um, this is just an air over hydraulic. This is just a like a porta. Porter ram out of one of those porta packs from 
like I think this is like Princess Auto or Harbor Freight has them. Usually they have like a little bottle jack thing with it. I just want to pneumatically do it, so I push down, it punches it, I go up, it releases. Uh, my die is like nothing fancy. I just scab some random junk together to make my die slide through. This is just a random piece of steel. I just literally just ground, ground it till it made a shape that I liked. Uh, I just put this in the back, that's my stop. I've uh, just heat treated it quick, just hit a torch there, did the old dunk, dunkaroo. Uh, then this bottom die was my, I tried to make a nicer die and my first one was better because uh, my, every time I would do a louver I'd go up and come back, they actually stayed pretty straight. Now I find it drifts a bit and well, I'm too lazy to actually fix it. Uh, my first one was just a hard plate here and then just some random scabby chunks around and it just seemed to work. It did what I needed it to do. They look good. The louvers look all right. Uh, see for yourself. Nothing wrong with them. That's what I need. I think they're two, two and a quarter or something like that. I only got the one size die. Don't care. It's all I ever needed to do. So yeah, that's uh, that's the the louver press. There's your typical English wheel. That one's a Harbor Freight because our Princess Auto didn't have those at the time. And then I got a planishing hammer, which those things rock. Um, if you had to have a choice between that or an English wheel, if you're starting sheet metal, I would say go with the planishing hammer. Um, you'll see way more rewards faster uh, working metal, get a better feel. This thing's great. Honestly, I think it's faster than a lot of the pneumatic stuff, but you gotta hand bash your tin first and then just use it to smooth out all the, the wrinkles and the bends and dings you put in the steel. Uh, this is a, I don't use this very much, but this was like a Harbor Freight uh, bead roller. I just added all this heavy gusseting. There's tons of videos of guys doing this. Um, this thing's been used and abused. I gotta fix it. It still has a few dies that I like to use and stuff, but uh, I did buy a, a pneumatic one, so it's okay. But if you're buying a powered one, I'd recommend going with the biggest motor they have uh, and the biggest throat you can afford, anyways. Build some of my own dies and stuff, but this is nice for tipping and doing whatever. I don't do too much. Well, if you're rolling a panel, things like that, whatever. You know what a bead roller is. It's just some axle tubes from a, I don't know, like a 40s Ford. I was kind of keeping around to do jack stands or something, I don't know, or stands for tools. Like this one here is just a, it's my shear, but it's actually just a, yeah, that's an old, I think that's a crank out of a, one of my flathead sixes I had in an old Plymouth or something. I just built a, a jig on top so I can change these out. So there's this one. And then if I want to use my bigger shear, I dump it on there. Could use it with a receiver hitch or do something. This was just stuff I had lying around, so I just used it. That's all. Uh, this is my plasma table. Um, it's pretty much just made out of random junk that I had lying around. Uh, I had another plasma table before this that I made and it was just done with some threaded rod for my uh, Y and X accesses uh, But this one yeah was a big step up It's uh, yeah, I don't know it Didn't cost very much the steel was just some stuff I had lying around um, So I just built the frame out of that I did buy this rail on eBay. The first version of this table, I actually did it with chain and then had my motors just had some sprockets on it, but I found it was too, it would jar too much trying to cut. So I went to this rack, rack style. So it's much better. Uh, the motors, like the drives, is just Chinese 
driver board. Um, I do have torch height on here. It's one of these Pomona things. I don't have much into the thing. I think the all the motors and the electronics was like three, four hundred dollars, and uh, I had to buy some steel. But I think I'm into this thing for maybe a thousand bucks, if that. The plasma, I think, costs more than it. I do, I think I have a video of my old table. If I do, I will link it or play it now. This is my uh, metal working bench. I just basically stack most of my metal stuff on there. Uh, I want to weld that on there so I can put some more my more tin snips on it. It's like a shear. I don't know. Sometimes if I got to shave something, I just bash on that. Uh, off the air tank that's on my bender. I just use this if I'm trying to beat something like into a roundness. A roundish shape. Same with the bag of sand there. If you're trying to beat in something. It's just a leather bag full of sand. Before I had that, I would just go out in the driveway and just beat it in the sand. Or fill an old welding glove with sand. That works too. Then just vice grip the end. Yeah, the edges are all round, so if I'm usually beating on a, a panel and I'm trying to make a curve in it, I just made different curves on the bench that I have something flat that I can just kind of hammer and try to make, you know, a hooked edge on something. So this one, this is nothing new, but I just wish I did a bigger, smaller tank. So if I redo this thing, I'm going to use a smaller tank. But all it is is just some round pipes just bent with a slot in it that you can fit your sheet metal through. So then you can bend and get this angle. The thing is, nothing I do needs this big of an angle. So, so I didn't have a slip roller, or I don't have one this big. Uh, so basically I put it here and then I'll just slowly walk it and bend it around to get my, my angle I need out of it. Well, I don't know. That's what I needed to do. This one I think some of you old hot rodder guys would dig. I, uh, this is a jig for dropping axles. This is like one of the axles I had dropped. Um, I just welded an old spindle. I had the angle wrong so I had to do that, twist it. Um, basically you just run the kingpin through. You heat the crap out of this thing. And then I put it in my press and I go push down and then I do have a limit, so it's about three inches a drop is what I can get out of it. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see. I did this setup, a lot of guys don't have this, but I did it just so everything stays consistent. So whenever, it doesn't matter what I do, it just gives you, I guess they call it a stretch drop. It keeps everything, it doesn't get narrower, it stays the same length. But yeah, again, made out of just some garbage I had lying around, but it does the job. I've dropped, I don't know, I think all my cars have an axle that I did with this. Hopefully I covered everything everybody was wondering. If I didn't get something or miss something that you're inquiring about, let me know. Leave a comment below. Uh, I try to reply to everybody's comments. So, again, thanks for watching.